Back to the pedal board project. Got the power supply bracket in. Time to put it all together. But first, I want to say that uh, a very important life skill, and one that I try to enforce on myself, even though I'm putting stuff on YouTube and the temptation there is always to be right and always to be an expert, is to say that I made a mistake. And that's an important thing to, to admit in life. Uh, if you don't uh, allow for mistakes and the, the ability to say one was wrong, you never get better at something. And you become a generally unpleasant person to be around. Uh, so, uh, thanks to one viewer of the last video, and I don't remember his name at the moment that I'm saying this, but I'll put this in the description below. Thanks, man. Uh, he pointed out two things. Uh, number one, that the uh, talking machine has a buffered bypass. And so it has, this one's true bypass, though it uses uh, a relay. So it, you know, it's a momentary switch, but it's bu true bypass. This one, though, is buffered. And I originally had this before the fuzz factory. And the fuzz factory will sound terrible with a, a buffer in front of it. So my original order to go through this and then to the, the, the fuzz factory here and then to the hummingbird and then to the canyon is thrown off. So I needed to move the fuzz factory first. And so the guitar will plug into the fuzz factory. Um, didn't require a lot of uh, cable changes, but that's a very important thing. The other thing that was very important was that uh, the two electroharmonics, the electroharmonics here, and uh, this electroharmonics, the two that I thought were tip positive, are actually tip negative. And that's because electroharmonics uh, defied con the conventional way of demonstrating uh, pedal power polarity. Pa -pa 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 -pa. Um, there's a convention that there's a ring and, you know, they have the outer ring and the center conductor. And to the right of that is usually just written negative or positive. And to the right of it on theirs is written positive. But what that means is that the, the outer ring is positive. And they, if you squint just right, you can see that the middle says negative. Uh, combine that with my need for uh, bifocals, which I don't have right now. And... Uh, I misread it because they don't use the industry standard convention for that. So it's no problem. I already had plenty of, of uh, tip negative cables. So, But I'm glad that I did not test uh, the uh, uh, strength of any reverse polarity diodes that Electroharmonics put in these because I'm sure these are all surface mount. That would have been a very uh, embarrassing and time-consuming repair on, on my budget, not that would have come out of my pocket. So thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, so the only thing which is tip positive here, I don't recall right now. It's either the dub siren or the uh, helicon. Uh, but I will confirm that before I wire it up. Anyway, um, the other change, just because of uh, practical matters, is the dub siren comes off. I said the dub siren comes off for use because this is handheld on a gig, but I want it to be stored. So it's stored right there for transit. It comes off for the gig, which meant that this moved down um, because I didn't want, if my original plan would have had the dub siren here, this was a little more convenient to use up there for the foot, but it would have meant that the Velcro that holds this on would have gotten feet on it all the time. And I've, I've tested this. This is still comfortable to step on. So plans change. But, you know, this is a relatively minor change. This is a relatively minor change. It looks cool this way. It'll still be very easy to use. Uh, I've got a, a, the box in to make the, the larger tap tempo switch. It'll go right here. And if he changes, the pedals are on here. No big deal. You know, if we go to a pedal that mounts to the side, these cables aren't long enough. That's that's the downside to doing a custom thing like this is that you, uh, you know, the cable links are what they are. It's a it's a tricky thing when you plan out pedal boards. So do, how flexible do you want it? Do you be able to want to take this off and put a tube screamer here, or you got to go to the sides? So you end up having a lot of floppy extra length, which can be a problem 
in transit, but gives you more flexibility. Uh, so we've taken kind of a middle of the road approach. You know, if you're going on a world tour and you know exactly what you're going to use, then everything gets exactly the cable length and you don't use Velcro, you use dual lock. Dual lock does not come up, you know, and it's a pain in the butt to make any changes because basically if you're doing a world tour, we're talking budgets where if you need to have a, a different pedal board a year later, you just make a different pedal board. And that was the pedal board used for that tour with all the dual lock and stuff. Um, if you're going to be changing pedals out a lot, the Velcro is great. If you're going to change the pedals out a lot, you can have floppy cables. It's a, a trade-off. Or you have different sets of cables that you change out. Um, that's, it would If he were to come back and say, no, I need to use something here with side mounted cables, just a matter of making two new cables and rebundling them. It's, it's not an un, uh, undoable change. So this is uh, fixed enough for the level of touring that he's doing. And uh, if anything needs to be repaired, it does come off easily. And dual lock, it's very difficult to, to pull a, a pedal off, you know. And there are better, there are other sticky loop stuff besides Velcro on the market uh, that I could have gone with. But again, this uh, had to be done very quickly quickly. I don't know why I whistled on that. And uh, uh, this Velcro uh, came with the pedal train, so I already had it. So let's get the power supply mounted. All right, the longest run I'm going to be doing is from this Helicon, and it's going to one of the 12-volt, uh, 500 milliamp taps. So I know now that once I mount the brackets, I can mount this all the way down here, and that run will be fine and I'll secure it to the pedal board uh, so it's not flopping around. But I just want to make sure that it would reach so I don't have to do that there. I always like to do the, the power supply at one end or the other because it's really easy to remember it's on the right or it's on the left. It's hard to remember it's like a third of the way down. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this over here. And I know that I've got just enough slack for that with the long run. All right, that is the brackets are installed. Uh, Easy access for the IEC. This this run has just got enough slack that there's no real pressure on it, but there's not going to be flop to it. This was the longest run. I've got to do a bunch of other 9-volt connections. Um, the only other one which has a real consideration is the dub siren, and that is uh, 12 volts um, at one of the high uh, current settings, and uh, that one is tip positive. I'm going to do that one last because that one's got some special consideration anyway. Uh, I'm going to do all the standard 9 volts that are going to go to these here. And then there's going to be a lot more cable bundling. Um, if I were running any AC runs, I'd be routing the AC power uh, away from any of the audio cables. But the DC um, in most places can be routed along with the AC, uh, the sig AC that we're using for uh, the uh, signal path without any issues. So some of these uh, quarter inch brackets are gonna be replaced by half inch, so I can bundle a whole bunch of stuff together. And uh, I'll just make it up as I go along because that's part of the fun of it. Almost done. I've got a hole drilled here. I need to get a half inch clamp right here. I've got a 3 8 inch here that's not all the way tightened because it's just not enough. So I need to do a half inch for there and there. I'm going to check my stash, see if I have one or whether I need to run to the store and get some. So I've got a combination of quarter inch and 3 8 inch and then I'll have two half inches. And that bundles everything very neatly with just enough slack that there's no real pressure on anything but nothing's flopping around. So that's a good spot to be. That will be fine in the meantime testing to see if the damn thing works. Um, I've got to shorten the cable that goes from here to here because I just it was from a, the, the previous run. I just got to take off about three inches for it to fit right. I've got to do the uh, tap tempo box and the cable from here to there. And um, quick note on the dub siren, which has this white tip positive connection that goes right there. Um, I've got that six foot long DC extension cable. So when in use, he unplugs this, um, 
put this extension cable on and I'm going to be making a, a six foot long uh, audio cable as well. But for transit, I guess it'd be better to transit it like this so that the uh, power connection is not flopping around. But the uh, when it's in place, it is secured to the bottom of this. So there's a little bit of slack, but it's not going to be flopping around and pulling. So in transit, I guess this is the way to go so that this is not hanging off the edge. Is it beautiful? No. Will it sound great and be reliable? Yes. Okay, that'll work. So a uh, little stomp box to make, uh, one cable to make, two audio cables to make, and then just shorten this one. The end is in sight. All right. Tap tempo box in place. This one won't rock back and forth when you step on it like that little bitty one would. All the cable done for that. Shorten the cable to there. Um, made a cable to go between this and this when this is in use. So you plug the guitar into here and plug this in. It's a between song kind of thing. Um, but, you know, good quality Megami and Neutrik. Good solder joints. Quite a bit less expensive than if you buy it pre-made. I, th I think better soldering. Um, and then I've got these six foot long adapters that go from this plug to this when it's in use. And I'll, I'll test that. But the fun part is um, we are about to go plug this in uh, and test it. Because like I said, everything uh, that I expected to, expected to do is done. Now we get to see if there are any gotchas if this pedal has a dirty pot if some cable i just did is not good even though it all measured fine with the, with the uh the meter you know the proof is in the pudding so let's see what's going on we're gonna plug into a deluxe reverb and check it out
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 